Life in a world that keeps changing Think that it's progress you're making Copy and paste pretty faces All the time Pictures so perfect we play Hello everyone, welcome to Anointed Lady TV, the home of news and politics. If it is your first time in this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you like what we do on this channel, hit on the subscribe button. Also put on the notification bell so you'll be notified by YouTube anytime we drop a new video. And if you are returning subscribers, thank you very much for always coming back to watch our videos. On this platform, we drop videos every day and we react to every video that come our way. And on this very video, I will be watching with you. And after watching, let's go to the comment section and drop our opinion constructively. Like our videos and also share our videos if possible. See you next time in my next video. Tinubu arrived at the presidential villa on his first day of work, hours after he took the oath of office as Nigeria's 16th president. As Nigeria's 16th head of state and government since 1960 and fifth elected president since 1999, the enormity of the job Tinubu is inheriting is very huge. He must hit the ground running considering the socio-economic situation on ground. And to assist him, a law is in place to ensure he has his cabinet in place within 60 days. If at all there is anything for Nigerians to cheer about Tinubu's presidency, it is their disengagement from Buhari's government, an era that set them backwards a decade or more. It is about a break from the Buhari years that are better described as years of the locust. Joining us now to discuss the huge expectations Nigerians want from the new president, Bola Tinubu, and the formation of his government is Olisa Agbakoba, a senior advocate of Nigeria. Good morning, Mr. Agbakoba, and welcome to the morning show. Morning, Ayo. How are you? Very well, thank you. I must say happy birthday to you as well, 70 on the 29th of May, inauguration day as well. So yeah. happy birthday, Nereas. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So starting Thank out, you. I think it's quite instructive that she celebrated a landmark age on a landmark day whereby we, uh, the, new, the 16th president <laughs> of Nigeria was sworn in. And as I mentioned earlier on, expectations are high. Very quickly, what are your immediate expectations from the president? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, thanks very much. But there's a sort of background, you know. Uh, president Tinubu has gone through four processes aspirant candidate of his party, president-elect, and now president. And in spite of the fact that there are constitutional challenges in the courts, I think all Nigerians must, must endorse him now as constitutionally approved, pending whatever happens in the, in the election tribunal. So I think the last, the, la the last speaker, I liked what she said, that we all must come behind him so that he can do the task that he has set up for himself. And I remember, I, I watched the, um, the uh, investiture dinner, and I was very happy that he said, no one asked me for this job. I, on my own, took upon the task of being president of Nigeria. So a lot is expected of him. And a couple of things I'll say. One, national unity. The country is so divided, but nothing can happen without President Tinubu making a big attempt to unite Nigerians. And I would suggest that he can call a meeting of the sub-nationalities of Nigeria, the Afedi Ferres, the Ohaneses, because these guys, you know, have a very strong hold on their ethnic, you know, sub-nationalities. If that happens and it, is, and it is successful, that then pushes the way forward for him to now unleash a couple of big programs. One would be insecurity. I would say all service chiefs should honorably resign, all of them, including the IG of police because they've not done well. President Tinubu cannot carry on with these uh, service chiefs. We need to create a new uh, security infrastructure. Actually, the last real security infrastructure was propelled by Professor Akinyemi. I was then at the NIIA and I took part in writing the SSS bill. Unfortunately, it has turned out to be a behemoth. But we must change the security infrastructure. We must change our military doctrine, and we now need to consider the theory of irregular warfare, the bandits, 
Boko Haram, they all fight, I pop, they all fighting a regular warfare. But I see our soldiers using conventional means that will not work. So I hope the president would take that into account. Another issue would be the one concerning the economy. There's no money. The debt to revenue uh, uh, ratio is horrible. If we earn 100 naira, we're spending 100 naira to pay debt. So there's nothing he can do. So quickly, he must look for how to generate revenue. I'm sitting here in Apapa. This is a gold mine. The port here produces 20 billion naira every day. That's about 8 trillion, which is about a third of the economy. Yet this place is abandoned. I'd like to see the president propelling to the National Assembly an emergency regeneration bill for Apapa. It may cost 10 to 15 billion, but it will be worth it because we get a lot of money from Apapa. There are 56,000 broken projects that are uncompleted. We need to see legislation go into the National Assembly so that those uh, unbroken projects, broken projects can be quickly completed and bring out money for us. In the maritime economy, which has been glossed over by all presidents in Nigeria, it needs to form a central and key part of the president's agenda. I need to see the president appoint a minister for maritime affairs. Nigeria is a very huge country. Outside of oil and gas, the maritime sector is the second largest, yet there is no minister. There is a minister of aviation, which is smaller than the maritime industry, so that is something that ought to be done. Analysts have shown that the maritime sector can produce up to 7 to 8 trillion a year. So you see, we've got the first one that I've just told you, 20 billion from the ports, another 8 trillion from uh, the maritime sector, so that's already 16 trillion. Then we need to talk about limited government. The government is simply too big. We need to talk about anti-corruption. The anti-corruption process is not working. I have challenged the constitutionality of the EFCC. The EFCC is a behemoth. It needs to be dismantled. Mr. Bauer needs to go because what he's doing is not attracting people's confidence. He needs to go. He's always in battles with everybody. Now he's battling uh, Matawale. That's no way to fight corruption. So we need to see Mr. Bauer step aside honorably so that the anti-corruption process can be seen to be genuinely uh, fought by the president without any uh, equivocation. So all the guys who took part in the old government should honorably step down. Now, he needs to have good people. In the CIA, they refer to top people as top assassins. My number one top assassin for the attorney general's position would be either Bapatunde Ogala or BRF. Fashola, Fashola is a big brain, so he can easily do that. Legal failure would mean that you need a very strong attorney general to, to do strong work in development and, uh, and uh, law and order. Uh, for the SGF, because if you don't put in good people, you're not going to get results. So I would say someone like Governor Bagudu should be headed to the uh, position of the SGF. And so on and so forth. So if you have good people around, the president, if he has good people around, then he's likely to make a success of his job. But we are very anxious. Nigeria is very anxious that the president succeeds. Because if you ask Nigerians, they are more interested in, in development than who is actually president. So if it had been Peter Obi or Mr. Atiku, it would make no difference. So the fact that there are cases in the tribunal should not deter the president from absolutely getting his job done. The poverty in the land, multidimensional poverty, is 131 million is too high. So if he can get all these things done in, 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 in 100 days, I'm sure people will say, yes, uh, we've seen someone who has come to the job and is keen to deliver. So I wish him you know, uh, the best. Oh, my word. I am uh, so happy you've already laid out what should be the entire agenda for the first 100 days of uh, this president. I remember when President uh, Buhari uh, was going into government and a lot of people who are very good people, very able people said that there is an agenda for the first 100 days of the president and that from day one he's going to hit the ground running and then they waited for 100 days and we still Absolutely. didn't have ministers. Now, yeah. President Bola Ahmed yeah. Numbu got into office on Monday, on your birthday. By the way, happy birthday. And 70 looks so impressively good on you, sir. Well done. 
Um, may Thank God you. continue to keep you Thank well. You. So Thank you. Um, looking at President Tinubu today, you will see that on, Mon on Tuesday, he went into office, there were meetings that I had, and then today we're waiting, we will hear what will happen. And the question some people are asking is, what will be the right timeline within which we must see some amount of movement that gives the impression that we're not going to be in for another six months or three months or two months of waiting in the wings to see things happen. What do you think will be the appropriate timeline? When should we expect the president to come out, hit the ground running and say, there is no honeymoon period, especially with uh, fuel scarcity now, and we haven't heard from the president with the kind of thing that will happen, uh, that could happen with that. Mm. The appropriate timeline is absolutely today. Today, I would think he should be making critical appointments. I've just given a couple of names. I'd like to see in place an attorney general. I'd like to see in place uh, a CBN governor, either Mustafa Chiko B or, um, uh, or Yemi Kadoso. I'd like to see uh, a minister of transport. I'd like to see the transport ministry reorganized into four sub-ministries of rail, road, shipping, and air with the Secretary of Transport organizing this. I'd like to see uh, works, you know, cease to be a ministry and should go into, into uh, transport. So these are the couple of big things we need to see. By 6 p.m. today, the challenge for President Tinubu would be to name at least four or five critical ministers. Critical. Because there's no time to waste. Critical ministers who would immediately begin to outline what the president hopes to achieve in 100 days. If I don't hear from the president today, I mean, not me personally, but if, oh, by the way, I think that um, uh, Dele Alake is a very good choice for presidential spokesman, although I'd rather call him press secretary. There's another guy who's very good uh, in the, but he wasn't given opportunity to flourish. That's a jury. You know, he was, in, he was in channels. I need to see him as director of communications because he's absolutely a brilliant communicator. He needs to communicate what government is doing. So these are the things I expect to see today. Not necessarily for the president to be making big speeches. Let him go to the office and work, push out his people, talk about how he's going to cut inflation, talk about how he's going to create jobs, talk about limited government, talk about the anti-corruption program, talk about national unity, talk about the insecurity issues. These are the big things. Now, what happens okay. when he does all this is people say, oh, by the way, okay. there's something new here. There's something like hope. Okay. Hope is what makes people happy, even though they may be poor. So that's what we need to see. Okay. So a couple of these names you've been banning around. A lot of people have been talking about uh, Bolaho Elias too, you know, uh, for the uh, position of AG. Mm. I mean, what's your take on that? And mm -hmm. before I ask my question, I'll say happy, happy birthday to you. And I will still come celebrate with you. Thank you. you. Happy Rufai. birthday. We, we, we need to do it. Thank it's you. a proper milestone here. Also, some of the things that have happened, yeah, and thanks. I'm happy you talked about the fact that he needs to get a team ready. Just like I said on this show, that he needs to get a team ready to be able to respond to the fallout of this fuel scarcity debacle that has happened. All right. How should he navigate yeah. his way through yeah. that? Because this is supposed to be yeah. his honeymoon period, but it's apparent that it's no longer honeymoon for him. Also, another part is okay. about this debacle between EFCC and DSS yesterday. I am happy he took a stand over it and he told the DSS to leave, but it's a blight on the security architecture of our mm -hmm. country you talked about. What's your take on this issue, sir? Mm. Yeah, um, Bola uh, Lias, he's a great guy, he's a friend of mine, so he also qualifies. I just named a few guys that came to my head. But my point about the Attorney General is the need to put in somebody who knows what he is going to do. So that's for that. On the DSS, uh, EFCC, you know, fight. That's precisely why I said he's just going to clean out the stable, you know, the stable. There's a whole lot of mess. The DSS has to understand that it's, it's, it's under the rule of law. So we want to see the president pursue the principle of constitutionalism. But my worry more is on the EFCC side. I think Mr. Bauer's tenure has been tainted by, you know, rightly or wrongly, I might just be expressing a, 
a view that is not uh, popular, but rightly or wrongly, if you need to have someone fight corruption, that person must be seen to fight it. There must be no baggage. There's been too much baggage around uh, Mr. Bauer, not that personally, but the way in which EFCC carries out its functions. And I'd like to see the president review the fact of EFCC's constitutionality. Nigerians don't believe in the EFCC generally, and that, that will not be good for the president in his fight uh, to, to rid the country of corruption. All right, I'd like to delve deeper um, in terms of what you said um, in your opening statement with regards to bringing together Nigerians from different parts of the country. We've seen uh, ethnic uh, divisions mm. along ethnic lines, polarized, like ne almost um, ha as we haven't yeah. seen in recent times. And he did make allusions to that during his inaugural speech, that yeah. irrespective of the party you're from, his president yes. to everyone. If you recall, the former president, um, at, um, Buhari, had said that he belonged to everyone and belonged to no one, almost saying that he was going to be the yeah. president for everyone. But we saw that his tenure and administration yeah. was rife with allegations of nepotism and the likes. What should the president do? So yes. just to expound on your statement, to begin to bring Nigerians yeah. together, well, to begin to promote mm, unity yeah. in the nation. Mm, 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 mm. If I were President Tinubu, I'm not going to look back. Anyone who looks in the rear view mirror while driving will have a crash. Forget President um, uh, Buhari's tenure of office in eight years. It's gone. It's gone. So I will not be looking at what he did eight years ago. I'll just be saying, what can I do? Because if you start looking back, then you carry a lot of issues and baggage. Was this rightly done or not rightly done? We all know the issues around President Buhari. But right now, I think he's in Dara, so he's no longer an issue. The issue is President Tinubu and what he can do. He's the man in Aso Rock, not President Buhari. So what I would urge Nigerians is to forget the past and to say, what can President uh, Tinubu do to make us happy. You know, Nigerians are not even really uh, big. They don't demand much. They want go a, good, a, a good job. They want housing. They want water. They want fuel. Little things. That's all. So, Mr. Tinubu, look forward. Don't look backwards. If you look, if you look backwards, <laughs> you're going to enter some hot soup. So, all the issues that are confronting you as president, one of which is national unity, is what he needs to, to confront. I feel, after 43 years of being in the uh, pro-democracy issue struggle, that part of Nigeria's problem is disunity. So I look at what happened in, 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 in Europe in the 1800s, when they had the 30 years war and the 100 years war, and they just came together and said, why are we even fighting? And they had a very big convention in the region of Germany called Westphalia. I would recommend that process to President Tinubu. So all the European kingdoms and came together and had a treaty on peace. And I mentioned the leaders of the sub-national entities in Nigeria because they're the ones who have cultural and ethnic validity. Look at someone like um, Edwin Clark in, uh, in, 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 in Rivers. He has big he has big, he has, he's, he's got a big stature. Look at Arewa, look at uh, um, Ohaneze, look at uh, Afeniferi. These are people who I feel, if Mr. Tinubu uses, can calm the situation. Because that would be what would enable him to have a canvas upon which to deliver good governance. So I strongly recommend it. I also strongly recommend to anyone who will be a top advisor to Tinubu to read a book called which was written by um, an American at the time when Mr. Roosevelt came into office. So I see a big relationship between when Roosevelt came into FDR, came into office and introduced the New Deal and Mr. Tinubu's tenure now. That book should be one that will be on the table of the president, looking at it every, every minute to say, here's how I want to go. He's got to have a plan, a clear plan, a vision, and that vision must be driven by top people, people who are burning with the desire to turn around Nigeria. That's how he needs to go. And if he does this, I can assure you that we'll begin to see some results in 100 days. And Nigerians will be happy for the first time in a long time. Okay.
Uh, very quickly then, uh, there are two things on my mind right now. The first one is a very quick, uh, very easy question yeah. to ask you. Uh, you mentioned the different sociocultural organizations and you did say uh, the Ohaneze and Indigo and uh, the Afeniferi and all of them. If you bring them together, it will be a, a very good thing. A lot of people are arguing that he should please just let Namdi Kanu go. What would be your opinion on that? That's a very quick answer. But the real issue... Absolutely. Uh, I yeah. don't understand. Yeah. The, the mm -hmm. second thing that I wanted to raise is the uh, national conference that was had, and a lot of people have been saying that Nigeria's constitution does not represent we the people. Should he address that, and should he use this opportunity as he's yes. settling in yes. to do that? Yes. Yes. I can't hear you anymore. Oh, okay. I was saying that the national conference and the outcome is being gathering yes. dust. Can he yes. do something about it and yes. say we the people have got to be able to say this yes. constitution is ours? And then on Nam Dekanu, what's your opinion? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'll take the second first. On Nam Dekanu, there's no reason to detain him. It's not necessary. It's just heating up the polity. I would say whatever it is, Draw a line in the sand and say, Nam Kanu, so long as you're doing what you're doing in the context of the Constitution, you're expressing a desire for Biafra. You're not fighting, you're not causing trouble, but go ahead. It's for, I, I'm an Igbo man, I don't support it. So what makes people think that Nam De Kanu's uh, 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 cry for Biafra would necessarily resonate? But it's because the government use the wrong methods by putting him in prison that it has become an issue. I would do the first thing to say to Nandi Kano, you are pardoned. All charges are dropped. And that will lower the temperature I speak about. We need to do that. Then on the national conference, please, please, Mr. President, don't call another national conference. We've had enough of it. All the issues to resolve Nigeria's problems are known to us. Some call it political restructuring. Some say it's division of powers. So just look at the Constitution. We don't believe in it because it's not our Constitution. It was given to us by the military. So that's why I said, bring these sub-ethnic nationalities together. I was a member of the 2014 National Conference. I had no idea where I was to call because I don't, I don't have any cultural relationship no. anywhere. But these sub-nationalities are the ones that can help Mr. the President validate a new Constitution. All right. Whether the constitution is going to be you know, abrogated and a new one uh, introduced, I don't know. But those are the things that he would need to do to create a, a new national order. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Olisa Agbakoba, SA. Gentlemen, good day, my brothers and sisters, my mommies and my daddies over there. Is your sister again, your doctor, your friend, your girl, anointed lady Tilvin? Please, if today is your first time of coming across my YouTube channel, please do subscribe for me. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video, you will be notified. So in this my channel, I will be bringing up many things to you in which you will benefit from it. I do talk show, I do news, anything you want to talk about, I am into it. Please subscribe, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video or each time I'm on live on YouTube, you will be notified. Thank you very much for always being there for me. Please do subscribe for me and as you do so, God will richly bless you and meet your heart desire. Thank you very much. I love you all. Ladies and gentlemen, good day my brothers and sisters, my mommies and my daddies over there. 
is your sister again, your doctor, your friend, your girl, admitted Lady TV. Please, if today is your first time of coming across my YouTube channel, please do subscribe for me. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video, you will be notified. So in this my channel, I will be bringing up many things to you in which you will benefit from it. I do talk show, I do news, anything you want to talk about, I am into it. Please subscribe, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video or each time I'm on live on YouTube, you will be notified. Thank you very much for always being there for me. Please do subscribe for me and as you do so, God will richly bless you and meet your heart desire. Thank you very much. I love you all.